Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're meeting the Malinois X. So what is a Malinois X, I hear you cry? Well, he's a direct cross between the Belgian Malinois and the German Shepherd Dog. So I cross two amazing dog breeds who already reign king of the military and police services. Well, the Belgian Malinois is known for his fearless drive and with this drive comes instantaneous behaviour. They are doers and will do whatever you train them to do with literally no thought. They run on impulse and are super brave and charged, so much that it can make them impossible to keep as a family pet. The German Shepherd, famous for his steady demeanour and high intelligence. He is a problem solver, a thinker and can be a cool family pet as well as serving in the special forces. So what if we take the drive of the Malinois and calm him down a bit with some of the laid back demeanour of the Shepherd to give him a little more thought before action as well as keeping the size and the bravery of the Malinois would we then get the superhero military dog of all time? Well, today we meet such a dog breed. We will meet him and put him to the test. Will he be everything we expect him to be? Or maybe not as great as you may think? Could he replace the now super popular Belgian Malinois as the most popular choice for the special forces? Or simply be a fad that passes? Meet the new Malinois X. The Belgian Malinois, fearless, athletic, light and energetic, with a running bite that can knock a man off his feet. Currently considered to be the armed forces number one military dog of choice, this dog can work until he literally drops dead, as his energy bank can pretty much run forever, plus his kamikaze attitude means that nothing is off the list when it comes to what he can and will do. He would literally jump out of an aeroplane with no thought, even if there was no parachute attached to him. He weighs approximately 25 kilograms, which is 55 pounds, and stands around 22 to 26 inches tall. Then we've got the German Shepherd. Intelligent, highly obedient and dependable, with an incredible bite strength and the ability to sniff out anything. His size is a deterrent in itself, with hardly any criminal opposing him when coming face to face with him in a standoff. He rarely malfunctions when trained to a high standard and has been said to understand almost every word we say, like talking to another human being. Currently considered to be the police force's number one choice on the streets, as his relaxed and intelligent demeanor means he truly thinks through a situation before acting so no errors are ever made. He weighs approximately 30 to 40 kilograms, which is 66 to 77 pounds, and stands around 26 to 28 inches tall. Now, both dogs are amazing in their own right, but what if we combine the two to create a super dog? What would we get? What if we could take the fearless military drive of the Malinois and combine it with the steady intelligence of the German Shepherd? Would we have created the world's most unbelievable military dog or perhaps a calmer Malinois to live in a home with a family? Animal Watch has covered both the Belgian Malinois and the German Shepherd as a family protection dog, wildlife protection hero and as a ruthless security dog. We've watched Malinois abseil with zero fear and take down armed poachers in Africa. I've also experienced the crushing bite of the German Shepherd and watched it intelligently read a situation and act accordingly when a family's life was at risk. In both dog breeds, each one lacks what the other one has. The Malinois' selling point is his zero hesitation and absolute obedience. He would jump out of a 60-storey building if you said jump. But is that always a good thing? Plus, his nervous energy is enough to send the average family into a mental meltdown, hence why he's usually not on the list as a family.
family protection dog. The German Shepherd's selling point is intelligence and his extremely efficient sense of smell. He's very relaxed in the house, which is great for families, but his size and weight lets him down when the military require a smaller, faster dog they can carry. Top dog trainer Garrett Wing of American Standard Dog Training was on hand to give an excellent description of both breeds. All right, so we'll start out with Anubis. So he is a three-year-old Belgian Malinois. He came to our board and train program a couple years ago. There's no off switch on Malinois. It takes them many, many years before they even start to settle down. So it's, it could be like hell. It's like having a, a Tasmanian devil in your home. Again, there are exceptions to the rule. There are some calm Malinois out there, but generally speaking, they are a force to be reckoned with. Do they make amazing dogs? Yes, they're amazing dogs, but they're built for a purpose, all right, to be worked. How are you gonna simulate at home all the work that a dog like this needs? Now, I'm not saying they're aggressive right out of the box, but they're bred to work, to track, to hunt, to, to herd. Can they make amazing dogs? Yes, they're for people with an active lifestyle and who have a ton of time and energy to devote to a dog like this. A dog like this needs to be trained all day, every day, Hades is a nine, maybe 10 month old Malinois X or Malinois cross. So somewhere along the line, someone said, well, German Shepherds make amazing work dogs and police work. Malinois make amazing police dogs and police work. What happens if you combine the two? Will you get a superhero of a dog? And the answer in short is yes, you could. You absolutely could. Best case scenario of mixing these two breeds together, in my humble opinion, is this. You get the intelligence of a German Shepherd, but the drive of a Malinois. The best way sometimes to discuss what a Malinois is is to, to compare it to a German Shepherd. I always use this example, and this is a fun example to describe the difference between a Malinois and a Shepherd. So if you were standing on top of a cliff, a thousand feet in the air, and you had a, a German Shepherd, and you showed him a tennis ball, and the dog was crazy for the tennis ball, and you threw that tennis ball, and it, as the dog's running after it, the ball falls off the cliff. The German Shepherd's gonna run full speed to the end of the cliff, but er, stop short, look, and spend the next 30 minutes or an hour trying to figure out how to get down and get that tennis ball. That's a working line German Shepherd. Now let's take a working line Malinois. Hades, please. Good. A working line Malinois, same scenario. You throw the, the ball off the cliff, the Malinois is gonna run to the end of the cliff and jump. Catch the ball midair and wag its tail all the way down to the ground. That's most working line Malinois. They don't think, their drive overpowers their, their brain, if you will. In uh, protection sports or in the police world with these dogs, you always see German Shepherds kind of think their way through it and Malinois just, I guess like, kill everything and ask questions later, if you will. And not to say that they're more aggressive, they just, they're crazy, they're crazy. They got a little touch of crazy and we like that. Sometimes we, we don't want the dog to think their way through it, we just want them to go. So the problem with that is a Malinois could hurt themselves. Um, they're a little manic. So when we're combining the two, we're hoping to keep a little bit of that intelligence and that calm, focused demeanor and sprinkle in a little bit of high speed energy. Or let's think of it in reverse. Take all that high speed drive, that, that want to just crush, crush, crush and go after whatever at, at no cost, but add a little bit of intelligence on top of that. A little bit of calm, let's think through this so that you can have the best of both worlds. Now that doesn't mean Malinois are stupid. They're, they're not stupid at all, they're very smart. It's just again, their drive overpowers their ability to, to stop for a moment and think things through before they act. They just act. On the looks of a Malinois cross, man, it could be anything. It could look 90% like a shepherd, 10% like a Malinois. It could be the flip of that. It could look 90% like a Malinois, 10% like a shepherd. Him, he's like, I don't know, a good 50-50. For me, it's, again, it's not about the looks, it's like the performance of the dog. And in his case, let's talk about that. In his case, he looks more like a Malinois, acts almost exactly like a shepherd. This is a shepherd in a Malinois uh, clothing, him. But his brothers and sisters could be the reverse. His brothers and sisters could look more shepherd, but act more like a Malinois. That's what's interesting about Malinois crosses, you never know what's gonna come out the other end. So is the Malinois cross German Shepherd the answer? Firstly, what exactly is he? Well, he's a direct breeding mix where one parent is a German Shepherd and the other parent is a Belgian Malinois. He's new, he's cool, 
and word on the street he's the best of both breeds. The German Shepherd's relaxed personality and thought processing, cancelling out the chaos of the Malinois, and the Malinois' fit and light body cancelling out the Shepherd's heaviness, a long list of inherited diseases. But is this true, and is he everything people are reading about him? So today I've travelled to Somerset in the UK to meet three Malinois cross German Shepherds. One highly trained protection dog, one troublesome puppy, and one breeding female of the future. We will ask top dog trainer Ashley Louth his professional opinion, as well as find out what happened when novice dog owner Charlie decided to buy a Malinois cross in the puppy ads in the hope that it would be better behaved than a normal, hyper-energetic Malinois. Hello, how are you? I'm Annika. Hi, yeah. nice, Hi, nice to, to meet, meet you, you, Annika. This? I'm Ashley and this is Remus. Remus! Our three-year-old German Shepherd uh, Malinois cross. You are so beautiful. Oh gosh, look at him. He's so beautiful. Very lovely. What a beautiful, calm demeanour. You are so handsome. You are so handsome. I've been wanting to find out about this breed for so long. On first appearance, Remy was exquisite. He was a cross between a Malinois and a Czech line shepherd dog. He possessed those almond shaped Malinois eyes and his size was still smaller than a normal German shepherd. I could see why people desire these dogs as they are so handsome as well as so clever. But was he the answer to everyone's oh. dreams? I sat down with Ashley to pick his brains, as he's had loads of experience with these crossbreeds. What cross have we got here? So this is a Czech line working German Shepherd, hence the dark colour, crossed with a normal Malinois. He's got the sort of markings from yeah. a Malinois, yeah. but obviously in a much darker colour. Same with the face as well and the yeah. bone structure. So first of all, what we've got to talk about is what people would expect to get if you were to mix a German Shepherd directly with a Malinois. A direct cross with a dog is not going to give you puppies that are all the same. No. Some will look like the German Shepherd, some will look like the Malinois. What is your experience with the puppies that have come out of this immediate direct cross? They've all been very level-headed, which again, I think is a little bit the German Shepherd shining through. Very high drive, great workability. The German Shepherd does seem to give them a better nose for tracking as well. The other thing that varies about as much as their mental capacities is their um, looks. The colours, you get some with up ears, some with floppy ears, some with almost Labrador ears. So, you know, there is a lot of variables yeah. in, in how they look and how they work and how they think. Now, do you think that the statement that we've been hearing from other YouTube dog experts online about possibly this could be the ultimate military dog. Do you think there's any truth in that? Or does it require a lot more breeding going forward with the actual crosses being bred with the crosses to create more stability in appearance and workability? Yeah, there's a, a lot of forethought that has to go into it. Personally, I don't think they will ever overtake the Malinois. The reason people go for the Malinois in those fields is because they are smaller, they are lighter weight, which for a lot of the exercises makes them easier whether it's getting into tight spaces, whether it's jumping out of planes. If you're putting the German Shepherd in there, you're actually giving them a lot more chunk, a lot more bone, a lot more weight. So again, you're actually losing some of the abilities. Yeah. We know there's a huge fad with Malinois right now um, due to them appearing in the movies and people thinking, oh, what an amazing, intelligent dog, which of course they are, but they are not for the average household to have in a family environment because they have a lot of energy, they have a lot of anxiety, they pace around, they want to work. Do you think by adding German Shepherd to Malinois, we might be closer to getting a pet Malinois sort of alternative that somebody could have in the home? No, you give it more size and you give it more intelligence. Therefore, although it may not need the physical exercise quite as much, it actually needs a lot more mental stimulation, which is obviously, again, very time consuming. And, and again, a lot more than your average family are able to do. But for a military dog, it could work? Unfortunately, we have to remember that by putting the German Shepherd back into the Malinois, where the Malinois was used to create the German Shepherd, 
you've also got all these extra health complications that the Malinois don't suffer from. Ah. The hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, allergies, eyesight problems. The Malinois doesn't have that at the moment. Is this because there's too many breeders that just breed for money in the back of newspapers? Yeah, exactly. So Joe blogs on the street, fancies his Malinois cross. So he goes, looks it up in the newspaper and he just gets it from a backyard breeder that's bred with anything. Like yeah, a puppy no farm. health testing on either sides, no actual trainability or workability, no temperament testing, no socialising. If they come from bad breeders who are breeding from bad temperament and bad health and bad background, you'll, you'll get a dog that is not, you know, stable. Yeah, not mentally stable and you buy a liability that could cost you tens of thousands of pounds in vet's bills. Ashley briefly mentioned a client who was arriving today with a Malinois Cross Shepherd mix. This man was having a stressful time with his new puppy, as the puppy clearly had inherited a fair chunk of Malinois hyper-personality over the shepherd's calmness. We were here to meet him in a few moments, but first we were treated to some of Remy's amazing talents in protection and tracking. So now we're going to send Remus off so that he can uh, go and detain our suspected attacker. Now we're going to go down and we're going to pat down our suspect and uh, see if Remus will protect me halfway through when our guy goes in for the attack. Okay, so now we're going to go for a long send and we're going to have our suspect run away from us. Get him! We're going to swap over and put Remus's harness on and now we're going to go and track our suspect. It was very impressive to see Remy at work and for sure this puppy had inherited just the right genetics from both Malinois and Shepherd parents to produce an exceptional dog. But remember what we mentioned about a direct cross? Not all the puppies come out how you want them to be. Some will look more Shepherd but could have a Malinois personality and vice versa. A first generation cross is a gamble. You won't ever know what you truly get until several generations down of purposeful selective breeding to produce the traits you desire from both breeds. Perfect timing to finish on as we were told that our Malinois ex-puppy owner had arrived and I couldn't wait to meet this cheeky puppy I'd heard so much about. It was striking to see how physically different this little girl was to Remy. Yes, she was a standard German Shepherd cross Malinois and not the Czechline Shepherd variation which affected coloration, but she was tapered and slim with floppy ears and a much longer Shepherd-like muzzle. And she was bonkers, bonkers wired 
like a typical pure blood Malinois, not a crossbreed which you would expect to get both traits. I felt that she had taken on a lot of the Malinois' nervous energy. Well, I'm here with Charlie and Honey. And how old is Honey? She's uh, nine and a half months. Nine and a half months old. And she is a German Shepherd mix Malinois. Yep. You've brought her here today to start doing a little bit of training with her. What sort of problems are you experiencing with her right now? I have to walk around the house on the lead at the moment. Really? Um, because she just jumps everywhere. I've got a three-year-old and a five-year-old. Right. And uh, she just jumps at them. Not viciously, yeah, but just play, playfully. Like go to knock them down. She's really nicely uh, socialised. When you went to pick her as a pet, were you purposely looking for a cross Malinois German Shepherd? I looked into a Malinois and then I was reading up on it and it said about a cross. They drive a little bit less and they're a bit smarter. Does she chew things up? Um, so if I'm at work, she'll, she'll tear the house up. <gasps> or, 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 so now I've had to put her in the garden. I've actually moved her into a kennel in the day for the daytime and in the nighttime I bring her in. You've gone and picked a puppy for all the reasons that people online are saying that you're going to get more intelligence more size, a little bit calmer than the crazy Malinois. But right now, she looks like she's got a lot of Malinois DNA going on in her little body. People watch online videos that are suggesting that these dogs are a really good sort of mix between the two types, German Shepherd and a Malinois. But as a pet, they're quite demanding if you're not working them. Oh, she makes me get up in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll make sure I get up. Now, you're doing the right thing because you're now doing something about it. A lot of dogs like your beautiful honey here can end up in rescues because people can't cope. Yep. And you're finding out the hard way, aren't you? You actually realize- I am, um, yeah, but so she ain't going anywhere. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, you, so you know when people say, oh my God, these dogs drive me crazy. They really are just doing something all the time. They just can't keep still. They're just, and even now she's got the German Shepherd, that's still tough. Yeah. You're going to do some great training today and hopefully maybe in a year's time, she'll be a completely different dog. I hope so. Poor Charlie had his hands full, but he was doing the right thing and getting help. This just proved that you never quite know what percentage Malinois or what percentage German Shepherd genes your puppy will inherit. And just to prove a point even further, we were introduced to another female Malinois cross shepherd called Mimo. She was one years old and very shepherdy looking. How does he work in comparison to the Malinois that you have worked with and the German Shepherds? So he does listen better. He hits a little bit harder with the bite work, again, because of his size. Same with the tracking, when he's tracking, he's a bit more to hold on to, in fact, because again, he's just got that extra few kilos in there behind yeah. him. How much heavier is he than the Malinois that you work with generally? He's probably about five, six kilos five heavier than the average Five or six kilograms. One. And that would make a, a huge difference with the military, as you were saying, the Malinois are very easy to pick up. So perhaps maybe there's a place in more police work. So just tell me, where will he end up working? Uh, he's actually going off to be a level three licensed security dog over in uh, Ireland. Fantastic, and what will he get to do when he's out there? Uh, well, all your sort of basic security things, patrolling areas, keeping an eye out for bad guys, tracking down any bad guys that have hopped over a fence. Mm -hmm. He'll be living with his family, with his new handler. Even though they are working dogs, they still need a stable temperament yeah. because they've still got to go home at the end of the day to their family, to the handler, all the kids about, all their pet dogs about, their cat. It's not about just having a mean yeah. machine, okay. which is, I think, where a lot of breeders go wrong. So if you weren't working a dog like this and you went to work, what sort of things would this dog probably get up to in your house? Well, if you haven't crated them, you're looking at destroyed sofas, beds, walls, carpets, floors, wiring. And again, that all poses a great risk to the dog. People have to bear in mind, if you're going to have a dog that isn't best left alone, and you work a lot, then yeah. they're not the breed for you. Yes. You were saying to me that you take in a lot of rescues. Now, you see dogs like this end up in rescues because people can't handle them, can they? Yes, the other great mistake that people make is they get a crate and that puppy very rarely leaves that crate. So they have no exposure to the outside world. And we get an awful amount like that here that come in. They've never seen traffic. They've never seen other people other than their family, other dogs. 
because they couldn't handle having it loose in the house and they couldn't be bothered to exercise it, so they just left it in a cake. So what's, what's the problems you get from that? Is it nervousness or even aggression? Yeah, it's a lot of nervous aggression. Again, we have other people that, you know, they have them outside in a lovely garden, but again, that dog's never left the garden. Mm. It's never seen anything, never been exposed to anything. So that dog, if they do put it into a rehoming centre rather than it coming to us, the chances are it'll either get put down or it'll just never leave the rescue centre. So you've taken on a few and you've managed to turn them around, but it's taken some, some work, hasn't it? Yeah, we, we spend about two months on them, get them through their sort of basic obedience, their bite work, tracking if required and then they'll look to going to a professional home either based with the prison service or the police force or if they're really really good they might even go to the uh, Ministry of Defence. Yeah. So when he comes back with you in the evening what does he do? Probably spends a couple of minutes of jumping around just being you know like oh we're inside and it's warm <laughs> and um, he'll then sleep for about 12, 13 hours but again, they'll only do that if you've stimulated them. Yeah, yeah. The final question and the biggest question. Is a Malinois cross German Shepherd better than a Malinois? No. Is it better than a German Shepherd? Yes. Because so, it's healthier. Because it's healthier. So there you go. In conclusion, well, it's obvious, isn't it? The Malinois X idea is certainly delightful and if every puppy popped out with that perfect desired combination of peaceful intelligence mixed with small size health and drive, you would indeed have a super new soldier dog. But right now, you just won't know what traits your puppy will have inherited off which parent. So you'll never be guaranteed to get what you dream of. If breeders, trainers and the military genuinely pursue this dog breed, then stability will only be gained after multi-generational breeding of this crossbreed down several generations, selecting for character traits, size and looks, until eventually a sound and steady dog is produced. Until then, beware picking up a Malinois cross out of the back of the newspaper adverts, as backyard breeders and puppy mills will be exploiting this trend with unhealthy, and possibly bad-tempered specimens. You are probably better off going with the purebred Malinois or Shepherd for now. So if you'd like to find out more about the dogs that Ashley trains and gets ready for service work, what is your website that people can get hold of you on? Louth-canine.com Instagram is Louth Canine and Facebook is Louth Canine Protection and Police Dogs. Fantastic. Well, I'll write that all here so you can find it and I'll also put a link in the description underneath the video so you can click right through and find out more. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today and you know what? This dog is so amazing. He's one of the few where I film and I go, I'd actually take him home right now. He is he's such a sweet, sweet, adorable, sensitive, Lovely well behaved. Dog. Oh, don't so blow well it, behaved. Don't blow it. He's so <laughs> gorgeous. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a big thumbs up and subscribe by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner and tune in every week where we'll be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation. Bye for now.